Okay, so for this case, we're going to be working with flow rates uh, uh, into a well. Um, so we're going to be given some different parameters uh, to do this. We're going to be using like variations of Darcy's law um, for single phase calculating these properties. So let's start with like our bubble point pressure. This reservoir is going to be 2,634 uh, PSI. And we're going to be at that or above. Like if we're just at that, it's going to be like maybe like one gas bubble or so, which isn't going to affect anything for in terms of this problem. Um, so our well bore, uh, PWF stands for like well bore flowing pressure, bottom hole pressure. That's going to be, we're going to say this is just at like bubble point, maybe a little bit above bubble point. So that's 2,634 PSI. This is just so we don't have like gas coming out of the oil and uh, therefore you'd have different equations you'd use for two phase. Um, so for our actual reservoir itself, our external radius, our E is 1,000 feet. Our thickness uh, is going to be 200 feet. Our permeability uh, is going to be two millidarcies. Our well bore radius, RW, is going to be 0 0.5 feet. Uh, our skin factor is going to be 3.5, which is dimensionless. Uh, skin factor is a way of measuring your well bore damage, so which may affect uh, your flow rates, for example. So you may have heard of uh, frac uh, fracking. Fracking uh, typically will give you a very low skin value, a negative skin value, which in turn will improve um, your recovery, your flow rates. And so when you have a positive skin in this case, it means there's, there's damage. So there may be something like blockage or there's different reasons why you may have skin. Um, so we have different uh, uh, properties from a PVT report, which will be in question one, which you may have seen or may see later. Um, so our we have two different pressure ranges. We have 4,000 PSI for this case, and we also have 2,635 PSI for this case, which is just one PSI above bubble point. I kind of want to show you how pressure in your reservoir, um, when it's different than your well bore pressure, how that'll affect flow rates. So this pressure you see here is going to be your um, average reservoir pressure. And do take note in the notes, you may see PE or P bar. There, there is a difference, and you'll see that in the equations for like pseudo steady and steady state. So make sure if you're using you're using the right uh, p value and you're using the right equation, what it's asking for. Um, so in this case, it'll be p bar that we're going to be uh, talking about. The other one is external pressure, which is like at your boundaries. Um, and so our formation volume factor of oil at bubble point is going to be 1.444. Um, at 4,000 psi, it's going to be 1.4207. Our viscosity at bubble point is going to be 0 0.3785, and it's going to be center poise, CP. And then our viscosity at 4,000 PSI is going to be 0 0.4367. Um, we'll start with solving for uh, steady state uh, first. We're going to be talking about pseudo steady state and steady state for this uh, question. So for steady state, we're going to be using uh, equation 4.34 in your notes, uh, and this is as follows right over here. So you're going to have Q equals your permeability in millidarcies times your height in feet times your average reservoir pressure, which is like P bar, like I said, in PSIA, minus your well bore pressure, which is also in PSI. And so this is a pressure differential, in which that's how Darcy's law works. It's based off uh, pressure difference is why uh, we say flow is occurring, why there's movement of fluids. So that's necessary in order for there actually to be flow in our case. Um, and then we have 141. 0.22, which is just a unit conversion to get your answer in terms of uh, stock tank barrels per day. So we're going to have viscosity of oil, our formation volume factor of oil, and this is going to be all multiplied by the natural log of your external radius of your reservoir divided by your well bore radius minus one half plus S, which is your skin. So do take note, like if you have a PE, for example, up there, based off what I believe, you won't have a negative one half at all, it'd just be plus S. So based off what you're using, it, it is a different value. So this would be for steady state. And our other equation we'll be working with is pseudo steady state. So a big difference with these, um, steady state's a lot less likely to occur um, in your reservoir. Pseudo steady state's more common. So do not try to get into too many details. Pseudo steady state uh, is basically the time where you're saying your external, um, basically after your pressure 
uh, propagation from your wellbore, what you feel, hits your external uh, boundaries of your reservoir, and then it goes into pseudo steady state. It don't uh, worry about that too much for right now. Just know that there is a difference between pseudo steady state and steady state, and they have different equations. So it's going to be basically the same thing, permeability, mill Darcy times height in feet times um, your pressure in your reservoir minus your wellbore pressure. Got it by 141.22 times viscosity of the oil times the formation volume factor of oil times the natural log of your external radius divided by your wellbore radius minus in this case, it'll be minus 3 fourths plus your skin factor, S. So we're going to be doing um, both steady state and pseudo steady state for 4,000 PSI and 2,635 PSI. So you'll get a total of four different flow rates for this question. So let's start with doing steady state for 4,000 PSI. So we'll have Q, and this will be in stock tank barrels per day. It's going to equal our permeability which is 2 times our thickness, which is going to be 200, times our differential, our difference in pressure. To, um, you can look, it's also called drawdown uh, pressure. Um, so you have your P minus PWF, which is just going to be 4,000 minus 2,634. And it's going to be divided by 141.22. So since we're dealing with 4,000 PSI here, we're going to be using these two properties here, formation volume factor of 4,000 and viscosity of 4,000. So there's going to be times 1.4207 times 0.43. Is also going to multiply the natural log of RE over RW, which that will just end up being uh, 2,000. It's 1,000 divided by 0 0.5 will just be 2,000. And this is going to be minus 1 half because we're dealing with steady state here, um, plus your skin factor, which is 3.5. And by looking at this equation, your higher your skin factor, your lower your Q, so that's, like I said, that uh, deals with damage. So when you do this out, when you solve for this, you're going to get a flow rate of 588.283 STB per day. Now doing, um, using the same pressure, now we're gonna use pseudo steady state, so it's going to be the same equation. The only thing that's changing is the minus one half to a minus three fourths. So that's the only difference between for the 4,000 PSI. So it's going to be the same equation, pretty much. So it's going to be two, 200 times four. And it's going to, like I said, it's just going to be the same thing. You have the 141.22. Um, you have one point, let's see, 1.4, 0 0.43, just to shorten it up a little bit, but it's going to be the same values as here. And then it's going to be the natural log of 2,000 minus 3 fourths this time, plus 3.5. And when you do this, you get Q to be 602.401 STB per day. So as you can see, having that um, a greater negative value in the denominator will increase your flow rate. And like I said, with skin factor, that's a negative value. It's going to also increase your flow rate. So that's for, these are for steady state. Well, this one's for steady. This one's for pseudo steady. Now doing the same exact equations, but now we're doing it for 2,635 PSI. So a few things will change here. One thing will change is your average reservoir pressure, P bar, which is, you know, listed here. That will become 2,635. 
Um, the other things that'll change is your viscosity of your oil will now be for at bubble point because we're just saying that's um, the property we're using for. So at bubble point, our viscosity of oil is 0 0.3785, formation volume factor, uh, bubble point's 1.444. And so basically doing steady state, we're going to have the equation of two times 200, 2635 minus 2634. Because like the pressure is 2635 and the wall bore pressure is 2634. So there's only a one PSI difference. So you can think about what kind of number you should expect then, if it's going to be higher or lower. So um, like I said, it's going to be for round bubble points. So we're just going to use the bubble point uh, values. So for viscosity, of 0 0.785. For BO, BOB, like I said, BOB, just volume formation factor at bubble point, B, um, UOB of viscosity at bubble point. 1.444 times the natural log of 2,000 minus, like I said, we're doing this for steady state. So we're going to have a minus 1 half plus uh, 3.5. So at 2,635 PSI, our flow rate uh, for steady state will be 0 0.4888 STB per day. So as you can see, um, just by looking at this equation before even doing pseudo steady state, the closer your pressure in your reservoir is to your well bore pressure, the less potential uh, fluids will have to move. So you're going to have a um, lower flow rate. So now using 2,635 PSI to calculate for pseudo steady state. Um, just going to be like the same equation as this for, except the only difference is going to be you're changing the negative one half to a negative three fourths. So your flow rate for that will be 0 0.50067 STB per day. And so as you can see, the flow rates are a lot lower um, when your pressure and your well bore is uh, closer to reservoir pressure, which why reservoir engineers, production engineers, um, that you want to optimize your production, but at the same time you don't want to produce too much all at once. So it's really a game to what you want your well bore pressure to be. You can manipulate it in different ways. You can use things uh, called artificial lift, which can like simulate different bottom hole pressures. You can uh, have like a wellhead pressure that can um, that's a di might be different than your bottom hole pressure that will drive fluids uh, through the wellbore. There's a variation of different ways, but basically pressure is the key component here of why you're having flow into your wellbore and eventually into your production facilities. So it is important property and uh, to understand it's uh, pretty good. So that's it for this problem. There was just one